Hello all and thank you for coming to my session when you think there is no time for learning or coding. My name is Eleftheria. I am a front-end developer and content creator and also a UX master's student. You can find me on my social media. I'm quite active on Twitter and on Instagram too, but also feel free to send me an email if you have any question or anything, or even you can find me on YouTube under the name Eleftheria Batsu. All right, now in this session, we will talk about my coding journey, how I started, how I got into tech, what helped me, what didn't help me, and some tips which I believe that they can also help you. The second part is how to form habits, why to form habits, how they can help you, and why it's important to form these habits. And last but not least, on the third part, we will talk about how to deal with frustration, how to deal with stress, and how to, to achieve all of your goals. Are you ready? Let's do this. Okay, so let's start, as I said, with my coding journey and how I became a front-end developer. Well, I graduated from an informatics and telecommunications of engineering kind of university. It's a polytechnical university, which is like five years. And I did a lot of maths. I did a lot of physics. I did a lot of electronics, but not so much of coding. And I wanted to be a front-end developer. I knew that, but I didn't have the skills. So I, I said, why not doing like an internship? And I did that internship. I am originally from Greece and I got the opportunity to do it abroad, specifically in Amsterdam. So I went in Amsterdam and I started doing this internship. It was exactly what I wanted. It was on front-end development. And when I was almost uh, like done with it, I knew that I wanted to find like a real job as a front-end developer. And I started looking at the job descriptions. And this is the hard part. I realized that I didn't have the skills that the jobs were asking for. I, I didn't know good enough like JavaScript. I didn't know any framework. I didn't know how to use Git and GitHub. I didn't know any of this stuff. My level of coding was a very, very, very basic one. Um, I was a little stressed because my internship was about to end and I didn't know what to do. Back then and still until now, every morning, my morning routine includes reading tech articles. So one day while I was uh, in my living room in a, rainy, in a rainy day in Amsterdam, I read an article in Medium written by Alexander Calway. And um, this title had, in the title, it was something like 100 days of code and the benefits of it. I said, okay. Let's read that article. And now in that article, the creator of the challenge, 100 days of code, he was explaining why 100 days of code can help you achieve your goals, be better at coding and land a job. And guess what? That was exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to improve my skills and I wanted to find a job. So I said, Heck yeah, let's do this, 100 days of go, let's do this. Now, in the challenge, there were some rules. The first rule was that I would code for one hour every day for 100 days. And that would actually help me to improve coding and improve my skills in general. The second rule was to upload my code on Git or an, another open source um, activity. So at first I didn't know anything about Git or GitHub or GitLab or stuff like that, like really anything. So it was like also a good opportunity to learn about that. And the second important thing here was that I eventually started building a portfolio. I were hosting my project somewhere. It was in a public places and people could see those projects. So that was like really beneficial. The third part of the challenge was to go on Twitter every day again and use the hashtag 100 days of code and like share my progress there. 
And also, if I wanted, I could give feedback to other people. I could encourage other people to take part in the challenge. And of course, I was also like asking for feedback for my projects. Again, that was a brilliant thing because I was at first quite afraid to go on Twitter and start like talking about my progress, especially thinking that I was like a total beginner, a total newbie, which I didn't know a lot of things. So it was a little bit hard at first, but eventually I think that it really helped me a lot. And it also helped me to connect with other people because it's not only having those perfect skills, but it's also connecting with people. Now, a lot of people asked me back then and still ask me now, what do you code? code? And like a lot of people say that they also want to code, but they don't know what to code. For me, an easy answer, I can give you like an easy answer because there are so many things that you can code. There are so many things that you can build. Just let your imagination play and you will find really really amazing stuff out there also some sources to learn because again a lot of pe people didn't know from where to start um so there are online educational platforms like udemy udacity coursera like so many things and you can find a lot of courses for free too and then of course it's youtube i love youtube i watch daily youtube uh there are so many courses again there you can find like courses for beginners, for experts, and really anything. And then there are online communities. And what I mean by that is Stack Overflow, hello, but also like Discord uh, servers and other uh, channels like Slack channels that you can go into them and find people that are equally excited as you are. And there are some other coding challenges. Like so far, I have uh, mentioned only 100 days of code. Later, I will mention other challenges as well. But there are other coding challenges that they give you each day a theme or a small project to build. Like they send you an email and they say like build that or that or that. Or they also share some links about some good articles or some other online sources. And last but not least, there are obviously magazines and books. I like to read a lot of tech articles, as I already said, but also books are amazing because you can go in depth about a subject. As for inspiration, again, like read blogs, browse forums, uh, check or like follow your favorite people on social media, check their GitHub, check their portfolios, see what they are up to. And also go to meetups and attend to conferences. Like right now, you cannot do that physically, but of course you can do that online, which is actually kind of better because well, you know, you're at home and you can watch other people talking. And since you are here, I'm pretty sure that you actually do that last step. Okay, now let's go back to me and I will share a little bit of what um, I wanted to learn in order to be a front-end developer. And please remember that it was like my very, very first steps and I didn't have like any um, external guidance on what to do. So my first goal, and as I was saying, the job descriptions was uh, to be a rock star on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And then, of course, learn how to use Git and GitHub because, again, I was seeing that everyone was asking for it. I wanted to stop being afraid of the console and the developer tools in general because I could see, again, like other developers at my internship where I was internshipping, where I could see other developers on YouTube that they had this black screen with the console or they had opened the developer tools. But before that, I had no idea what were these things were and how I could use them. And also, I wanted to learn something extra, like learning a framework. I started with AngularJS. Yes, I said AngularJS. So now I know that it wasn't a good option. And for those of you who don't know that, learning AngularJS was not a good option because now AngularJS is going to be deprecated. Uh, so that was not a good option, uh, but I still learned it. And also I learned a data visualization library called D3GS. That was actually pretty helpful because that's how I also landed my first um, developer's job, which was actually uh, remotely. 
and it was perfect for me. So, yep. Now, what did I build during those times, like those 100 days? As I said, my main goal was to learn HTML and CSS. So let's start from that. I took part in another challenge called Daily CSS Images. And in this challenge for 50 days, I was um, coding only with CSS. And every day I was getting a theme into my email. And that theme was like uh, code a cat, code a sandwich, code Superman. And I was trying to do all those things only with CSS. So what you're seeing right now is like the result of it. My next step was to learn JavaScript and I started working with FreeCodeCamp. For those of you who don't know, FreeCodeCamp is a free, amazing source to learn how to code and they, the JavaScript part is amazing. So I started doing some games like this one, the, the tic-tac-toe game, another one, the Simon Says game. And then I also started to playing a little bit more with AngularJS. The fun part is that Sometimes I still say that I know AngularJS and the people ask me, you mean Angular, Angular 2, 8? No, AngularJS. Are you sure you know AngularJS? I mean, sometimes I say I know AngularJS and people don't even believe me. But do keep in mind that this was like three, four years ago. Okay, and then I continue with the data visualization library called D3GS, which as I mentioned, it was actually pretty good because it led me to my first job. And Oh, and before that, how it led me to my first job was that I started creating YouTube videos. And in this, in this YouTube videos, I was coding. And um, at that time, I was coding with D3. I was like creating something. I was creating stuff like this that you're seeing right now. And someone approached and he said, I don't know a lot of stuff about that, but I'm really, really willing to learn more. So that's how I took the job. It was only because someone saw my videos on YouTube that I was coding about D3GS. Okay, and later after 100 days of code, maybe have realized that I'm talking about other challenges as well, not only 100 days of code. So let's check a little bit what challenges I did. As I said, 100 days of code, JavaScript 30, daily CSS images, and 301 days of code. If you take a look on the first date, which is like the 100 days of code, like right here, it's just one day before 2017. So it was like New Year's Eve. And I guess that everyone on New Year's Eve like they were outside, they were partying. I mean, not this year due to COVID, but other years like they were outside partying. No, I was at home and I was thinking about my future. And also, if you take a look on the, the fourth uh, date right here, it's, sorry, sorry, on the third day right here, it's on the, the Valentine's Day. I guess I didn't have anything better to do. And I was coding again. Anyway, let's keep moving and stop embarrassing ourselves. I kept doing more and more and more and more challenges and can do it. And I really wanted to improve myself. That was my goal. I wanted to be good at what I'm doing. So that's why back then and still now, like I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm coding and I'm trying to do the best that I can because I want to be good at it. And I always want to learn and learn and learn. Now, did the like did I gain something from this challenge? Obviously, yes. I, I gained so many things. Like I learned to be more optimistic and grateful for the people that I have around me. I learned to be better at concentrating faster. I learned to be better at time management. I also met a lot of interesting people, some of them offline, some of them online. Like as I said, the dev community is really big and Thank God we have internet and we can meet on and we can online meet a lot of people. And I also learned to believe more in myself and in my powers. But I also traveled a lot due to work. And except of coding, also traveling is like my second passion. So I could combine those two things, which was amazing. I'm not going to get into a lot of details about 
traveling and coding but if anyone is interested in learning more feel free to to send me an email or, or catch up with me on social media would i recommend signing up for a challenge like this and the short answer is yes if you want to improve if you want to get better if you want to to i don't know to meet more people if you want to to find a job if you want to build a portfolio then of course do get part in a challenge like this it doesn't have to be 100 days of code you don't have maybe to to go and use twitter like these days i see a lot of people that are using instagram just do it and start doing it now if you don't believe in yourself no one else will okay and now let's change um parts we will continue with the second part out of the three and this time we will talk about tips and techniques of habit formation and why this is important because coding and being in this mindset really has to do with habits either you realize it or not i will start with a quote that i really like and it says i'm not telling you it's going to be easy I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. I'm not telling you that coding is easy, finding a job is easy. I'm not telling you that uh, like being a student, it's easy. No, but what I'm telling you is that it's going to be worth it. And all of your time and effort and all of those days that you're in home and you're not getting out and all of those days that you say no i'm not going to the cinemas i'm not going to watch that movie because i have to finish that project all of these count and you will see it let's start digging into habits how to form habits so the first thing that you have to know is actually that everyone experience resistance and when you try to form a habit like let's say a good habit when you try for example to eat healthy and not sweets and candies you will feel the resistance you will feel that a cookie is there or a chocolate is there or a nice i don't know candy is in the fridge and you will want to eat it so know that resistance is always there and it will always get you and if you understand that then you can move on Some things that they can help you when you try to form a habit is setting limits. Let's talk a little bit about that. The first thing that you can do is to not spray your efforts around, which means be more focused at one thing at a time. A lot of people believe that multitasking is like uh, super helpful and super good, but no, Researches actually show that multitasking can slow you down a lot because your mind needs some time to change tasks. So don't multitask. And like um, a small thing here is that actually researches show that women are a little bit better than men in multitasking, but again, we are not that good. So as I said, focus on one thing at a time and try for consistency over volume. Consistency means that, for example, you have to to build a website. And the first thing that you will do is to do the register page, let's say. So don't leave it for the weekend. Don't say, oh, yes, but on the weekend I will have some free time. No, each day, maybe even for one hour, maybe even for 30 minutes, just try to code something. Code, code, code something every day, just a little bit. And don't let everything just for the weekend. It's better to have just a little free time rather than too much. Because again, when you have like too much time, you will say, okay, I'm going to do this later and I'm going to do that later. And eventually you don't do it. So start doing things now. Start slowly and always have a to-do list in front of you. We will talk about that also in a bit. And crossing off your things. It will help you. Next thing that I guess, again, it will help you or at least it helped me is tracking your progress visually. And this can be done in a lot of ways. For example, this is, um, this is a photo of my GitHub account, how it was looking while I was doing the challenge of 100 days of code. And your mind like is a playful thing. It will think of 
try not to break the change. So for example, here, when you see all those green little titles, titles, you don't want to break that chain. Also, something really, really, really important is keeping a log, a calendar, a to-do list, whatever, and whatever like suits you best. You don't have to use a fancy paid app. Maybe Maybe just simple uh, pen and paper will do the work for you, but always do write stuff down. And I know that maybe you have already read about these things that they can help you, like keeping a to-do list or being specific with your goals. But sometimes you only read about these things. Have you actually tried to implement those things? I know for myself that I was seeing uh, other people talking about keeping a to-do list and stuff like that. And I was like, Okay, I know in my mind what I want to do. Why should I write it down? But then I said, okay, let me write it actually down. And I started writing down everything, everything that I wanted to do for the day, for the week, my long-term goals. I tried to do like little things that I maybe I could forget them. And I saw that my productivity actually went up because I had everything in place and I could uh, manage my time better. And I could, I don't know, I was feeling very proud of myself when I was seeing that I actually did something. So really, if you don't already do that, try doing it. It will help you. Now, let's talk about something else, which again is quite important. The first thing is staying away from toxic environment. Like if you don't want something, don't keep it near you. If you don't want, for example, to eat candies and sweets, like don't have them near you. If you don't want to get distracted, don't keep your phone near you. Like have your phone on silent mode or an airplane mode. Tell your parents or your friends or your colleagues that right now you are doing something important, then they cannot interrupt you. Like have a specific time frame, time slot only for yourself and don't let others interrupt you. And in that time slot, try to be as productive as possible. Being productive and stay concentrated isn't something easy and it takes time and it takes practice. Try to do it. The other thing that you can do is to make the unwanted behavior difficult to be performed. What we mean by that is like try to have the easy things near you. If you want to code, for example, like have your uh, editor ready, have your passwords like ready or like know them by heart. And uh, again, like block the notifications and other stuff that you know that they will distract you. Start doing these small things to make your life easier. Now, um, every time that we have the habit, there are actually three things that are always are being done. It's an infinitive loop. And the first one is the trigger. The trigger is the cue, something that it will like push you and you will start doing something. The second step is the routine, which is the action habit like how you do something and the last step is the reward when you're feeling proud of yourself that you accomplished something and the reward can be something either physically or like uh, mentally I, I like for example when I do stuff uh, to take a break or to go for a short walk but for other people maybe it can be like uh, buying a new laptop buying uh, new shoes uh, it it really depends on you and something that works for me maybe doesn't work for you and the opposite. Some other things that can help you is the bright line rules. This is like getting from something general to something more specific. So as we said earlier, let's say that you want to build a website. Try to be very specific with what exactly do you want to build in that website. Let's say that you want to build uh, the register website, the register form say I will have this and this and this field and I will do those things today and tomorrow I will work with uh, UI design and the next day I will work with uh, the back end and stuff like that. Be very specific and every time try to subtask everything. The more you define what you want, the easier it's going to be for you to achieve it. So always a big goal, try to subtask it and you will see that you achieve those little things. 
The other thing is the keystone habit. So when it's something easy or when it's something that it gives you pleasure, why not keep doing it? When you see that something has like positive effects, why not keep doing it, right? For example, if you see that you're losing weight, why not like keep doing that? I mean, if your goal is to lose weight, right? If you see that coding every day has like some benefit for you and you are improving as a developer, why not keep doing it? But now I know what will, you will say. You will say that you want to code, you want to learn, you want to do this and this and this, but you don't have time. Guess what, my friends? We all have 24 hours. The way that we are using these hours, it's different, but we all have 24 hours in a day. Just keep that in mind. And now let's check some tips. I'm one of those people that I want to do so many things in a day. Okay, I always want to do something and I always like my to-do list is full of things. Be ruthless with what exactly do you want to build and what you want to do. For example, you can't learn everything in a day. So be very specific what you want to learn now, what will help you now and start doing that thing now. And then when you achieve that goal, you can continue to the next one. But please know that you cannot do everything. The other thing is change only one or two things at a time. And this is why like New Year's resolution never work because we write a lot of stuff in a paper and we say, I'm going to change this and this and this and that. These things are like too many. We cannot change so many things at a time. So again, like be very specific with one or two goals. And if you achieve those goals, then you can continue. Uh, also, like make it so small that you cannot say no. Make that habit and that thing so small that you will always do it. For example, I had that issue with the dishes. I hate doing the dishes. Um, yeah, I know. Silly, but I hate doing the dishes. So I said like every night... I will do them like maybe for just 10 minutes, but I will do, I will do the dishes. And it helped me a lot because now I have dishes. <laughs> okay. Um, start from something and think not only the best case scenario, but also like the worst case scenario. So what will happen if you cannot do something, if you cannot achieve something? And I know that this trick will not work for everyone, but I think that there are some people that they will think about that, like what will happen if I don't achieve that? What will happen if I don't learn that? And like try to think about all of those things. And again, you will see the difference. And the last thing here is have a minimum standard and you can always do more. For example, if you want to work out more, say that I will work out for 15 minutes every day and I'm pretty sure that you can find 15 minutes in a day. And if you see that you like that and if you see like all those good results that we discussed earlier, then you can always keep doing it more and more. Some other things that they can also help you achieving your goals is um, like doing two opposite things at the same time. This is like the yin yang principle. For example, if you want to learn code, uh, maybe don't go for two JavaScript uh, frameworks at the same time, but try to learn like two different things, maybe JavaScript and Java, or maybe learn uh, maths and JavaScript, or learn French and uh, HTML, like just do two opposite things at the time. And something else, uh, it, it's not a tip, but it's something that you could have like in mind, Something that it could help you when you're studying or when you're working is the Pomodoro technique. It's something that I actually use it daily because as I said, I'm also a master's student. I'm uh, studying for my master's in UX. So I study a lot and what I follow is the Pomodoro's technique. In this technique, you're studying for 30, 35 minutes and maybe even like 25 minutes and then you take a short break for five minutes and you repeat this cycle as many times as you can and that's how you stay concentrated for a small amount of time but fully concentrated and you also take a break. 
The last thing, which again is not a tip, but it's something that you could have um, in your mind, is the Pareto's principle. And what this principle says is that 80% of your output is coming from 20% of your input. This can really help you on having a clear focus on the things that you want to build. You can be like really specific and see what works and what's not working and make some small modifications to make your output even better. Okay, um, I think that I've already mentioned that, which is consistency over quantity, but it's something really important. That's why I also have it here. One of my favorite expressions, one of my favorite quotes says that part of courage is simply consistency. Again, as I said earlier, if you see that something is working, like why not keep doing it? You can only see great results with it. But also let's talk about three tips that I don't see very often, often, but they can be really helpful. One of those tips is keeping a not to do list. And what I mean by a not to do list is a list that you write the stuff that you shouldn't do. This can be, I will not watch Netflix for more than two hours in a day. I will not eat more than one ice cream in a day. I will not stay in the same chair in the same chair for more than two hours in a day because sometimes you forget to take breaks. Like keep that not to do list and actually keep it always in front of you so you will never forget those things. The second tip is to analyze your day and what activity is like worth or may not worth your time. And again, like think about it. Does it worth spending so much time on playing video games or watching movies? If you think that this is something okay, keep doing it. But otherwise, just completely remove it from your life. I don't mean stop watching movies, but I mean not watching so many movies or not playing so many games. And the last thing is that if you don't have something, imitate it. I know, for example, that a lot of people are struggling in learning English. And my suggestion there would be to go to online communities and start talking with people there. Because maybe uh, your friends also don't speak English. Maybe you are in a country that not a lot of people are talking English, but you want to improve it. So you can go to online communities and pretend that your friends are also speaking English. All right. And another quote that, again, I really like from Steve Jobs says that great things in business are never done by one person. They are always done by a team. That's why I talk about community and accountability. And that's why I would like to encourage you to take a part in a challenge and improve yourself because you have like that accountability. And sometimes you think that what will happen if I don't do this or if I don't do that, someone will notice it on Twitter or on my job. So that's how community and accountability works. Okay, and um, we will continue with the third part. I uh, hope that you are still with me. The third part is a small one, but personally, it's one of my favorite parts. It's about dealing with frustration, dealing with stress, dealing with other people, dealing with colleagues, and eventually dealing with yourself. Another quote, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, not the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. Keep that in mind and let's start this session. Maybe you have problems at your workspace, your workplace, what you can do with that. Think about it, is it only you can you talk about someone about your problem? Is it uh, maybe your colleagues, um, people from HR? Maybe it's ex-colleagues and you can track them on LinkedIn. Like try to talk with someone. And obviously, like if you see that those problems are still there, even if you have talk about them, then leave that place. Like your mental health is the most important thing. Also, sometimes people think that they are not like smart enough and they think that they are not capable of doing great things. But learn also how other people started their careers. And for example, I just talked about mine. 
Know that coding and learning it's hard. If it was easy, like everyone would do it, but they don't, it's hard. Don't compare yourself to others and know that when you're getting hired, you're not getting hired only because you have some coding skills, but also because you have some other things. Like maybe you are, um, maybe you have humor, maybe you are good with communication, maybe your boss saw something in you that you don't even know about that. A lot of people and usually like young people also have a problem with learning and they want to learn a lot of stuff and things like that. So my suggestion here would be to build projects. Don't only watch tutorials, but actually build projects and um, always have like an updated portfolio and don't afraid to ask feedback for your projects. Actually, if you're interested about feedback for front-end projects, you can also talk with me and um, I have a specific part on my YouTube channel that I do reviews and I give feedback on projects. So yeah, you can also contact with me if you want something like that. The, the second thing is that create a sustainable plan. Make sure what you want and try to work with that every single day. And now let's go to the last part, which is dealing with yourself. Because sometimes you think that you're not smart enough, you're not capable enough, but you are. So really like don't judge yourself too hard. It's okay to fail, like everyone fails, no one is perfect. And uh, from time to time, try to take a break break the rules like it, it's okay it's not a big deal and remember that we all stuck from time to time because again like it's not easy and sometimes you have to fail in order to learn something don't act like there is something wrong with you because you are perfect as you are and even if you're coming from a different background even if you didn't study uh, at the university uh, coding and stuff like that it's okay you still have all the skills and you can do it um, and really, really, the last thing is take care of yourself, eat healthy, exercise, uh, try to sleep at least eight hours, take a shower and all of this stuff. Thank you very much for uh, watching my session. I hope that you liked it. If you have any questions, again, like feel free to comment, like, share to me on my social media, on my email, and even on YouTube. Thank you very much. I'm wishing you a beautiful day and see you.